I'm reading to you from the authorized version of the scriptures. If you have a copy of the authorized version of the scriptures, please go ahead and get it. And please follow me along word for word, verse by verse at the scriptures we will be looking at today. Please follow me along. Uh, make sure I'm taking nothing out of context. Follow me along. Be a Berean. Search the scriptures daily, whether these things be so. Also follow along because sometimes the mouth will go quicker than the brain. Okay, it's going to be a very long video, um, just a very quick uh, video actually. But reading to you from Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 on to verse 9. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, Whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. Those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do. And the God of peace shall be with you. Hmm. Today, brethren, um, is Monday the 10th. Uh, it's 9.53 a.m. my time here in Woodstick, Illinois. Today, um, the Lord has made a way. And today... I, your servant, will be taking a train twice. Uh, I'm going to be leaving here, uh, Woodstock, for Chicago at the one the 133 train, I believe it is. Don't quote me. I got to check yet to make to finalize. But I'm going to be taking the train from Woodstock, Illinois, to Chicago to Ogilvy Station. Then I'm going to walk across the street and catch the 533 train to go to Quincy, Illinois, which will arrive at Quincy at some like between 1017 or something like that. And our brother Alexander Hartley is going to pick me up at Quincy and we're going to go back to his place to Shalbina and I'm going to be staying with our, our brother Alexander Hartley for a week. And during that time on the 13th, which is a Thursday, our brother Alexander Hartley is going to be having hip replacement surgery. Uh, yeah, so uh, please keep that in prayer. Um, the Lord, you know, we have put this, uh, we have put this before the Lord. It's like, Lord, if this is your will that this happened, make it happen. And, um, the Lord brought it to pass at the last moment through many prayers of the saints and through the blessings of the brethren, um, things have come to pass. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. But uh, I want to ask, uh, ask you, brethren, for prayer, okay? Uh, please, if you will, keep your servant in prayer as um, the Lord leads and guides and guides your servant to Shelbina. And um, also keep in your prayers our brother Alexander Hartley. He's going to be having hip replacement surgery. Um, and my wife has also had that before, too, and, you know, so it's it, it going to be a fun time for him, to say the least. I am leaving today, and Lord willing, I will return to Woodstock, Illinois, on the 17th, a full week. And here's the thing I'd like for, I, I ask you, please, brethren, to keep this in prayer. Once Brother Alexander Hartley has hip surgery, he ain't going to be driving. And getting from Shalbina to Quincy, that's going to be a challenge. Don't know how that's going to happen. 
Uh, hopefully, Lord willing, we will be able to call like a Lyft or a taxi or an Uber or something so we can get me from Shelbina to Quincy and so forth and so on. So please, brethren, keep that in prayer because um, uh, nobody wants me stuck. <laughs> okay, so so please keep that in prayer. And, and brethren, Please keep my wife, your sister, Susan, in your prayers as well. You brethren who I have converse with, uh, you know, uh, personally, that, you know, email and whatnot, it will not be a bad thing if you send out an email. There are those of you brethren who actually have uh, my wife's phone number. Go ahead and contact my wife. Uh, you, brethren, sisters, you have my permission. You know, in my absence, uh, please keep my wife in your prayers. Um, and also, too, my wife is well aware on how to use a firearm. So, <laughs> but please keep this in your prayers. I ask you for prayer. I ask you for prayer. Now, in this absence absence of me being uh, in Shalbina, it is possible that a video may come while in Shalbina. Okay, we've talked about that. So it is possible, you know, you know, it is possible. The Lord, like, hey, you know, here's a video. Here's something I want you to talk about. I will have access to um, a computer and online in Shelbina, so that is possible. But it is also possible that you will not see a video come for about a week. But um, nonetheless, brethren, please, please keep this in your prayers. Please pray for us. Please pray for your servant. Please pray for one another. Okay? Please pray for one another. Okay? So, um, but also too, turn to Acts chapter 20. You know, it is very possible because we do not know, you know, like, like it says here in Proverbs 27. And which is also echoed in the book of James. Okay, like it says in Proverbs 27, verse 1. Boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. Okay? And James also echoes that in uh, chapter 4, verse 13 and 14. Let's go there real quick. James 4, verses 13 and 14. Okay? Go to now, ye that say, Today or tomorrow we will go into such a city and continue there a year and buy and sell and get gain. Whereas ye know not what shall be on the morrow. For what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time and then vanisheth away. Verse 15. For that ye ought to say, If the Lord will, we shall live and do this or that. I was just talking to my wife before I came in here, and I told her, it's like, hey, this is going to be a, you know, a short video. See, you and I, brethren, it's different. Because to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And you and I, brethren, we will see each other again. But not yet, right? There's a beloved sister that I know of that um, went home to be with the Lord. And she's up there with the Lord. And uh, brethren, especially our brother Alexander, missing our sister terribly. And if she, are, you know, if she's looking down from, on he from heaven, it's like, you know, she's in heaven. That's not what I mean. But, you know, looking down, she's like, you know, brother, I'm sorry that you're missing me. But wait till you get here. <laughs> okay. Wait till you see the Lord yourself face to face. Wait, okay? I'm sorry I'm not there with you, but at the same time, I'd rather be with the Lord than with, with y'all down there. And like Paul himself, it's like I'm in a straight betwixt two. You know, to be with the Lord is far better. But there's a reason why we're still here. And I was, like I said, I was talking to my wife. It's like, okay. Do you remember the last words you said to so-and-so before they died? 
Do you remember the last things, the last time that you were with someone and then you come to find out that they died? You know, Paul tells us to have our, our speech uh, uh, with grace, seasoned with salt, that we may know how to answer every man. And James talks about, you know, the warnings of, hey, watch your eh, big mouth, right? What if this were the last time that my wife and I were to see each other? God forbid, but, you know, what, what if? What if? What if the people, your family that you are talking to or whatever, and then you or they were suddenly to go, what would be in your memory? What was like, wow, the last thing I said to so-and-so was in anger or in hate or whatever? Think about that. Think about that. What if today was your last day? And you have something unresolved, or you have some some stupid grudge that you know is keeping you in bitterness or something. If today was the last day you had with someone you love, how would you want that last moment? To be remembered on them who get, who you die, who die or get you know you die and they're left you know what's the last memory that you want them to have? Hmm? Acts chapter twenty verses twenty five under the close. And now behold, I know that ye all among whom I have gone preaching the kingdom of God, spiritual, shall see my face no more. Wherefore I take you to record this day that I am pure from the blood of all men, for I have not shunned to declare unto you all the counsel of God, and therein is love. Love is telling someone the truth. You don't have to be a jerk about it. But, you know, you got some guy running towards a cliff and they're going to go, ha, 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 and go dive headlong and die, Hate is, God loves you, keep running. Love is like, whoa, stop, dude, you're going to die. Stop. That's love. Okay? And Paul never shunned to declare what? Unto you all the counsel of God. Now granted, you don't have to be a jerk about it. But think about that. Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost and the Lord is that spirit hath made you overseers to feed the church of God which he hath purchased with his own blood. For I know this that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you not sparing the flock. Also of your own selves shall men arise speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after them. Yeah, I want to make a name for themselves. Be big shots. Therefore watch and remember that by the space of three years I cease not to warn every one night and day with tears. And now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all them which are sanctified. Unlike some accusations from a couple of Canadians and a crazy Australian, I have coveted no man's silver or gold or apparel. Yea, ye yourselves know that these hands have ministered unto my necessities and to them that were with me. I have shewed you all things, how that so laboring ye ought to support the weak and to remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he said it is more blessed to give than to receive. This is what the Lord has called me to. This is the labor of my hands, being in the scriptures, sharing with, the, with you what the Lord shares with me. Okay. And when he had thus spoken, he kneeled down and prayed with them all. And they all wept sore and fell on Paul's neck and kissed him, 
sorrowing, sorrowing most of all for the words which he spake, that they should see his face no more. And they accompanied him onto the ship. But see, here's the thing. These saints, they will see him again. But not yet. Not yet. And that's the thing with us saints. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. But we will see each other again. But not yet. Because Christianity has trivialized this, but the truth is God does have a plan for your life. Are you doing what he has called you to do? We also see in 1 Samuel chapter 12 something very similar from Samuel, of course, Samuel. 1 Samuel 12. This is, you know, the institution of Saul. You know, Saul was made king and whatnot. And Samuel was the last of the judges. Okay. 1 Samuel 12, verses 1 and verse 6. <clears throat> on to, uh, yeah, on to verse 6. And Samuel said unto all Israel, Behold, I have hearkened unto your voice and all that ye said unto me, and have made a king over you. And now, behold, the king walketh before you, and I am old and gray-headed. And behold, my sons are with you, and I have walked before you from my childhood unto this day. Behold, here I am, witness against me before the Lord, and before his anointed. Whose ox have I taken? Or whose ass have I taken? Or whom have I defrauded? Whom have I oppressed? Or of whose hand have I received any bribe to blind mine eyes therewith? And I will restore it you. Do you know over the years there are people who have offered me money to preach on something or to speak on something and I've turned it down? Okay. This, it's, this isn't about gold or silver. It's about the Lord and the word of his grace, the ministry of reconciliation and the word of reconciliation. The problem is there are way too many out there who are looking uh, to, the, to do stuff like this just to get gain financially or popularity or to get a crowd or a following or they're, or they're a sociopath wanting to be the center of attention. You've been called to preach. And there is one. There is one. A young man. Who is actually a saint of the church of the living God. Who is waiting. Until at least the age of 30. Praise the Lord. And I'm telling you. When that young man. Or of another nation. When he finally. When the Lord finally puts that young man into doing this the Lord's going to be with that young man Amen Anyway verse 4 And they said Thou hast not defrauded us nor oppressed us neither hast thou taken aught of any man's hand And of course devils will come around and lie and whatnot but the truth of the matter is Samuel like Paul wasn't about gain it's about the Lord And he said unto them, The Lord is witness against you, and his anointed is witness this day, that ye have not found aught in my hand. And they answered, He is witness. Verse 6. And Samuel said unto the people, It is the Lord that advanced Moses and Aaron, and that brought your fathers up out of the land of Egypt. <laughs> and verse 7. Now therefore stand still, that I may reason with you before the Lord of all the righteous acts of the Lord, which he did to you and to your fathers. And then he goes on to explain. But the point is, it's like, look, I'm going to tell you about the Lord. I'm going to share with you things of the Lord. Third John. Third John.
The elder unto the well-beloved Gaius, whom I love in the truth, beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospereth. For I rejoice greatly when the brethren came and testified of the truth that is in thee, even as thou walkest in the truth. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. Beloved, thou doest faithfully whatsoever thou doest to the brethren and to strangers, which have borne witness of thy charity before the Christians. Gotcha. Which have borne witness of thy charity before the church, the body of Christ, the saints, the church of the living God. Before the church, whom if thou bring forward on their journey after a godly sort, thou shalt do well. Because that for his name's sake they went forth, taking nothing of the Gentiles. We therefore ought to receive such, that we might be fellow helpers to the truth. Things to watch out for here. I wrote unto the church, but Diotrephes, who loveth to have the preeminence among us, among, among them receiveth us not. Wherefore, if I come, I will remember his deeds which he doeth, prating against us with malicious words, and not content therewith. Neither doth he himself receive the brethren, and forbiddeth them that would, and casteth them out of the church. Beloved, follow not that which is evil, but that which is good. He that doeth good is of God, but he that doeth evil hath not seen God. Demetrius hath good report of all men, and of the truth itself. Yea, and we also bear record, and ye know that our record is true. I had many things to write, but I will not with ink and pen write unto thee. But I trust I shall shortly see thee, and we shall speak face to face. Peace be to thee. Our friends salute thee. Greet the friend. Diatrophy. He's got a video on that, which will be in the uh, description box. So yes, brethren, please keep your servant in prayer. Please pray for us. Please pray for one another. Please pray for your sister, my wife. Please pray for us that the Lord's will be done, that he see your servant safely there and back again. And also, too, being in, a, in Chicago for a little while, going to have some time to spare, going to be passing out tracks. Um, and also, being in another state, yeah, going to be tracking, boy. So, just want to, and, and thank you to all the brethren, to all the sisters. You know who you are, um, who love us, who I have communications with, who love us, who pray for us, who help us. Um, Thank you. Thank you. That's going to be it. It's 10-12, uh, 10-14 uh, according to this. My time. I'm going to get this uploaded. Got time to spend with my wife. Um, like I said, please please keep your sister, my wife, in your prayers. Okay, so. Thank you, brethren. I love you. We love you. And to all you, our brothers and sisters, thank you. We will see you, Lord willing, 